Well, hello, Methley. It's really good to be with you and great to be connected in this way. It's a very strange time and a difficult time for us to reflect on how we do worship. Maybe not many of us are used to doing worship via YouTube or via a DVD, but we're getting there and we're working our heads around it. And what's special about this little moment is the chance that we'll be together, this chance that we can connect, even if it's not in the usual way. So wherever you are this morning, let's just pause for a moment and let's just pray. And as we pray, just try and picture somebody else or maybe a few other people from the Methley congregation. Just give yourself a chance to, to feel that sense of connection. Maybe close your eyes as you would have done even if you were in chapel this morning. But as we do that, as we close our eyes, let's just call to mind, let's just put in our face, uh, in our minds, the faces, the names of some of the people we know at, at Methley Chapel and in the village. And in so doing, maybe somebody will be thinking of you. And maybe together we can have a little bit of a congregation, even in our own minds, as we pray together. So let's just pray. Living God, in some mysterious way, we are connected this morning. In some way that we don't quite understand, we are connected this morning. Lord, we bring all sorts of anxiety and uncertainty, all sorts of mixed emotions, perhaps some anger, perhaps some pain, perhaps some grief, perhaps some fear. Yet we also perhaps little bring little moments of joy, moments of hope, things that we've appreciated about lockdown that have perhaps been better or been a gift. We bring frustration, but we bring hope too. And as we gather in worship, we feel that sense of connection with our brothers and sisters from Methley Chapel and Methley Village, from the air and colder circuit, from around the country, but indeed from around the world. People who will be praying right now, people who will be worshipping right now, and many people in lots of different situations and circumstances who will be trying to wrestle with what coronavirus means for them and their church and their community and their nation. So we bring all of those prayers, we bring all of those emotions, all of those not quite knowings, and we lay them at your feet, Lord God. We bring them before you. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Prince of Peace. Come, Lord of Light. Amen. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Worship his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Sing like never before, O my soul. Worship his holy name. Today's reading comes from the Gospel of John. We're in chapter 14, and I'll just read from you a few verses. It's John 14, 15 to 21. If you love me, Keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of Truth. 
the world cannot accept him, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you will also live. On that day, you will realise that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. In that passage, it's Jesus speaking, and Jesus promising his disciples and all of us reading for generations later, promising us the Holy Spirit. He doesn't actually quite use that phrase, the Holy Spirit, but he uses a word in Greek that's actually really hard to translate. That particular passage translates it as, um, that particular version of the Bible, it was the NIV I was reading from on my phone, translates it as advocate. I'll send an advocate to be with you. There are lots of other different attempts to translate it. Some say saviour, some redeemer. I was reading an article this week that suggested that the best literal translation would be defence attorney, would be the one sent to protect and defend you. So we have this promise of the Holy Spirit, this promise of the Spirit that comes from Jesus as he begins to think about what the end of his ministry here on earth might look like. We're promised the Holy Spirit. We promise that we won't be alone. In my Bible uh, and in the NIV version I just read for, that um, reflection, that passage, has the heading, Jesus promises the Holy Spirit. And it's one of the things I've been thinking about quite a lot during this strange time of lockdown, this strange time of being trapped in our own homes for many of us, or perhaps finding our, our routine completely thrown uh, up by having to work different hours, different shifts, having to try and work from home, um, having been furloughed, perhaps having just not the chance to go and see our family and our close friends, being kept away from our grandchildren, all of the, the strange and, and challenging emotions that come at this time. I've been thinking a lot about the Holy Spirit and Jesus's promise of the Holy Spirit. I guess it might be something about me that's just seeking connection at the moment, because it's very easy to feel isolated, isn't it? I'm very lucky to be self-isolating with two people who I love very much and who I get on with a huge amount in, in Hannah and Martha, but it's still not easy to just feel closed off as a little family of three, is it? We thrive on human connection and I'm missing many of those connections at the moment. Perhaps it's because I'm also missing the collective experience of worship, especially worship with you lot. I'm really missing the chance to just be at Methley, to hang out, to have lots of cups of tea at the end of service and natter about all the things that are going on, to um, have the chance to share in, in singing a Bob Marley song with Kev Dobson's guitar, or just to be together as we try and work out what it is to be Christians, what it is to follow Jesus, what it is to seek peace and justice and love in the world. And so I've spent a lot of time thinking about connection and relationship, and I guess about my own personal relationship with the living God. Perhaps because we're not having that those experiences together as much as we are, it means there's more time for me to think about what's my walk with Jesus looking like at the moment? To what extent am I seeking to be a better disciple? And one of the things I've been thinking a lot about, and perhaps particularly because of that reading in John, is this idea of the Trinity, this strange and mysterious thing that is at the heart of, of what it means to be to believe in the Christian God, this kind of strange idea that somehow God is three things and also one thing. 
and that God is one thing but has three different personalities or ways of being, that God is somehow creator, parent, and also God is somehow Christ, human, who walked amongst us, and God is also somehow spirit. And in this reading we get the, the Christ pointing towards the spirit, saying, I'm promising you that there is a part of God that will remain with me, even when I'm gone. So even as we feel the effects of isolation, of loneliness, perhaps of being trapped, of being separated from the ones we love, of social distancing, God is inviting us into relationship. I can't quite wrap my head around the Trinity and how God can be God and Christ and also Spirit, Creator, Christ and Spirit, but what I do see in that is that God is somehow always relationship. Actually, the very essence of God is three in one, is a bringing together, is togetherness, is love, is community. And so whilst I can't quite wrap my head around what coronavirus means for us at the moment in 2020 and what the future might look like as we try and work out how to ease the lockdown and what, what the future is for any of us and for our churches and for all the things that we took for granted just eight weeks ago. Whilst I can't quite wrap my head around all that, I do know that God is inviting me to love and God is inviting me to think about community and God is inviting me to find ways to keep connecting both with the divine and with other people, with each other, that we're better as a we than I am as a me, that we need to be holding together right now. I felt that sense of relationship, that sense of connection really powerfully uh, this time last weekend, when last Sunday at four o'clock um, I was privileged to be a very small part of the big church sing which happened on the Methodist Church's uh, Facebook page and YouTube channel over over the course of, of Sunday afternoon. It's only 40 minutes um, but in that lots of people from around the country contributed to a big service, a big Methodist service and at one point whilst we were watching well over a thousand people were joining in online live and as they joined in we knew that lots of people up and down the country, some of whom were texting me, but many of whom I didn't know and will never get to meet, were joining in. So as we sang Matt Redmond's 10,000 Reasons and we sang Blessed Assurance, we knew that there were lots of people around the country singing that too. And perhaps some of them could hold a tune better than me, perhaps some of them couldn't, but we knew that they were joining in anyway. And for those of you who have had the chance to join us on some of our Zoom services, either at Big Worship or at Easy Church, and had that experience of joining in with singing, even though we're muting our microphones because it sounds horrible if we don't, or perhaps you've been a part of Clueless Chorus, and we've joined in and we've sung along, even though it doesn't quite feel the same as being in the same building, there's something powerful going on. There is a sense of connection. So whilst we might not quite be able to wrap our heads around all the things that are going on at the moment, I do believe God is holding us together. God is inviting us into relationship. The Spirit of God is at work today, connecting us, bringing us together, inviting us into relationship with each other, with our brothers and sisters around the world and with our God. Can we listen to those promptings? Can we hold together? We're now just going to hear and join in with that song, that song that we sang last Sunday, um, 10,000 Reasons by Matt Redman. It's a worship song, but um, was put together brilliantly by a friend of mine, a chap called Matt Beckingham, who's leading the Methodist National Choir. And the Methodist National Choir was set up during lockdown. They were due to have a launch event uh, in, in late March of this year and obviously had to cancel that because of the coronavirus. So instead of having an event, Matt Beckingham just invited people to start sending him clips of them singing. And he's done some brilliant work uh, on the technical side behind the scenes and created this virtual choir. 
And so the Methodist Choir of Great Britain now has well over a thousand members and people from all over the country joining together in singing worship. So we'll join with them now as we sing this worship song. If you've not heard it before, um, just have a go, listen in. If you know it well, then sing it to the rooftops. Try and sing your own kitchen roof off as you join in with worship this morning. 10,000 reasons. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Worship his holy name.
you'll agree with me that that was a fun experience whether you knew that song and could join in or not it's just a great sense of connection that comes through in that a great sense of that relationship of that way that somehow despite everything we are finding ways to hold together we're finding ways to be connected and so as you go from this little act of worship as you move into whatever's next for you whatever you're doing to get through lockdown. I hope you'll feel a sense of connection. I hope you'll feel that the Lord God is inviting you into relationship, into relationship with the divine, some mysterious thing that we can't quite understand, but also into relationship with those around you. Perhaps today is a chance for you to get to know your neighbours a little bit better. Perhaps today is a chance for you to see if there's somebody in your street who could uh, who you could share shopping with. Either you could help them or they could help you. Perhaps this is a chance for you to pick up the telephone and call somebody who you've not spoken to for a long time. Let's keep finding ways to connect. Let's keep finding ways to reach out. Let's keep finding ways to be the people of God in Methley, here in the UK and around the world. God bless you and take care of each other and stay safe. See you soon.